In this video lecture, I'll be going over the polar arc length formula. So before we get to what this formula is, um, I think it's useful to recap the different arc length formulas that we've seen because we have seen three different arc length formulas. So for y equals f of x with f prime continuous, we had that the arc length over an interval from a to b involved integrating the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared dx. Okay. When we had parametric equations, we noted that dy dx, or f prime of x here, would be equal to dy dt over, whoops, over dx dt. Okay. And notice that we could do some manipulation of this formula and get a formula then for the arc length in terms of parametric equations where we go from alpha and beta, between alpha and beta, where those would be the range of values for t, and then we'd integrate the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. Okay. So what about getting um, the formula for arc length when we have a polar equation? Well, remember that we can write down a parametric form of the equation, um, given a polar equation, using the formula x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Okay, so again, by then taking dx d theta and dy d theta and plugging it into our parametric form of the equation, with using some um, identities and some algebraic simplification, we can get that we would have the following formula then for arc length in terms of our polar curve. So I'm not going through the derivation here, but they do. these three formulas are not totally different. They're just three ways to represent the same thing, depending on whether we have things in terms of parametric equations or if we have polar. Um, we can get from this initial form here to the parametric. We can get from the parametric to this polar um, form of the arc length. So here we're stating the, uh, the uh, polar equation arc length formula as um, an integral from a to b, where those are our theta bounds, of the square root of r squared, the function itself squared, plus dr d theta, the derivative of r with respect to theta, squared d theta. Okay, so we can use this formula to calculate the arc length of some curve on an interval. So we'll just go ahead and apply the formula here. So we have an integral from 0 to pi. This is going to be the square root of my function, 2 cosine theta squared plus the derivative of that function. So that would be um, negative 2 sine theta squared d theta. Okay. So what do we have here? We look at what we're going to get under our square root. This will end up being 4 cosine squared theta plus 4 sine squared theta. So we can see how we're going to be able to use a trig identity to simplify the arc length that we're looking at here. Okay, so we see if we could factor out a 4, this would be 4 times cosine squared plus sine squared, which we know is equal to 1. So this simplifies to just an integral of 2, so we'd have 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi, or 2 pi for our arc length. One thing that we can notice here is that the length of this polar curve, or excuse me, what this polar curve look like, looks like, 2 cosine theta. We've seen that type before. That's actually a, going to be a circle okay, of radius a over 2. If this was r equals a cosine theta, the radius ends up being a over 2. So here we have this radius of 1. Okay, So 2 is over here, but we have that radius of 1. And finding the arc length over the interval from 0 to pi, which is where this whole curve ends up being traced out, would just be the circumference of that circle. So that would be 2 pi r, which does come out to be 2 pi times 1. So we can use geometry to, to check that we did compute that arc length um, correctly. Let me know if you have any questions on using the polar arc length formula.